3. Causes arising in the mental body. I started this section of our study with the causes arising in the astral and etheric bodies because they are the major sources of trouble, owing to the fact that the bulk of humanity is astrally focused, just as the bulk of the forms in the animal kingdom are etherically focused. The forces pouring into the animal kingdom come predominantly from etheric levels and from the dense physical levels of life. The higher animals, however, owing to the development brought about through their contact with human beings, are becoming susceptible to forces coming from the astral plane, and they thus develop actions and reactions which are not purely instinctual. Today, owing to the development of the mind in the Aryan race, certain difficulties may arise in the physical body. Their origin is not basically mental but primarily due to the fact that the mental body is the transmitter when active and rightly aligned, a soul energy and this soul energy, pouring into the physical body, can produce certain conditions of overstimulation and difficulties connected with the nervous system. But it is the transmitted energy which causes the trouble and not the factor arising from the mind itself. I will elaborate this a little later. A. Wrong mental attitude. I would like to deal, first of all, with the basic premise that disease and physical liabilities are not the result of wrong thoughts. They are far more likely to be the result of no thought at all, or are caused by the failure to follow those fundamental laws which govern the mind of God. One interesting instance of this failure is the fact that man does not follow the basic law of rhythm, which governs all the processes of nature, and man is a part of nature. It is to this failure to work with the law of periodicity that we can trace much of the difficulty inherent in the use and the misuse of the sex urge. Instead of man being governed by the cyclic manifestation of the sex impulse, and his life, therefore, being ruled by a definite rhythm, there exists at this time no such. Copyright Copyright 1998 Rufus Trust 54 A Treatise on the Seven Rays Volume 4 Esoteric Healing Thing, except in the cycles through which the female passes, and little attention is paid to these. The male, however, is not governed by any such cycles, and has broken in also on the rhythm to which the female body should be subordinated, and which, rightly understood, would determine the use of the sex relationship, including naturally the male impulse also. This failure to live by the law of periodicity and to subordinate the appetite to cyclic control is one of the major causes of disease, and as these laws are given form on the mental plane, one might legitimately say that their infringement has a mental basis. This might be the case if the race were working mentally, but it is not. It is in the modern world of today that there is beginning a widespread infringement of these mental laws, particularly of the law of cycles, which determines the tides, controls world events and should also condition the individual and so establish rhythmic life habits, one of the major predisposing incentives to good health. By breaking this law of rhythm, man has disorganized the forces which, rightly used, tend to bring the body into a sound and healthy condition. By so doing, he has laid the foundation for that general debility and those inherent organic tendencies which predispose a man to ill health and which permit entrance into the system of those germs and bacteria which produce the outer forms of malignant disease. 
When humanity regains an understanding of the right use of time, which determines the law of rhythm on the physical plane, and can determine the proper cycle for the various manifestations of the life force upon the physical plane, then what was earlier an instinctual habit will become the intelligent usage of the future. This will constitute an entirely new science, and the rhythm of the natural processes and the establishing, as habits, the correct cycles of physical functioning, will bring about a new era of health and of sound physical conditions for the entire race. I use the word, establishing, for as the focus of racial attention shifts into the region of the higher values the physical vehicle will gain enormously, and good health, through right rhythmic living, plus correct thinking and soul contact, will become permanently established. There are, therefore, very few ills to which flesh is heir which are mentally based. It is exceedingly difficult to establish what they are. There are two reasons for this statistical failure. 1. The fact that very few, relatively speaking of the race are mentally polarized and therefore thinking. 2. The fact that the bulk of diseases are etheric or astral. Another factor producing this difficulty is that the thinking and the emotional reactions of man are so closely interrelated that it is not easy at this stage in evolution to separate feeling and thought, or to say that such or such ills arise in the astral or the mental body, or that certain ills are due to wrong feeling and others to wrong thinking. Speaking in terms of the entire human family, the thinking that is done in the world of today, is done by the relatively few. The rest are occupied with feeling, with sensuous perception and with the many and differing aspects of. Copyright Copyright 1998 Lucas Trust. 55. A Treatise on the Seven Rays. Volume 4. Esoteric Healing. Emotionalism such as irritability, worry, acute anxiety, aspiration towards some desired end or goal, depression, plus the dramatic life of the senses and of the I am the center consciousness. Few live in the world of thought and fewer still in the world of reality. When they do, the result is inevitably a better average of health because there is better integration, and as a result of freer play of the life forces throughout the vehicles of expression. D. Mental fanaticism, the dominance of thought forms. I would point out here that the diseases and difficulties which arise from what I have called wrong mental attitudes, fanaticisms and frustrated idealisms and thwarted hopes, fall into three categories, and a study of these will show you that, in the last analysis, they are not of mental origin at all, but primarily are the result of emotionalism entering in. 1. Those incident to the imposed physical plane activity and work which find their incentive in these mental conditions. They lead, for instance, to furious activity and overwork, due to the determination not to be frustrated but to make the plan work. The result is frequently the breaking down of the nervous system, which could have been avoided had the mental condition been changed in right rhythm on the physical plane achieved. But it was the work of a physical nature which caused the trouble far more than the mental condition. 2. Those brought about by the state of rebellion which colors all the life, and the registering of violent emotional reactions. D. 
These may be based upon a mental realization of the plan, for instance, plus a recognition that those plans are not materializing, owing often to the inadequacy of the physical equipment, but the basic cause of the disease is the emotional rebellion, and therefore not the mental condition. Bitterness, disgust, hatred and a sense of frustration can and do produce many of the prevalent toxic conditions and a state of general poisoning and ill health from which many people habitually suffer. Their vision is bigger than their accomplishments, and this causes emotional suffering. The cure for this condition is to be found in the simple word acceptance. This is not a negative state of settling down to a submissive non-active life, but it is a positive acceptance, in thought and in practical expression, of a condition which seems at present unavoidable. This leads to an avoidance of the waste of time in attempting the impossible and the right effort to carry forward that which is possible. 3. Those difficulties which are caused by the failure of the physical apparatus to measure up to the demands of the thought life of the individual. These are, naturally and usually, a part of the physical inheritance, and where this is the case there is normally nothing much to do. Though where the aspiration is real and persistent, a great deal might be accomplished in bringing about improvement and laying the ground for better functioning in another life cycle. It is necessary here that I should deal, as briefly as possible, with the problem of mental healing. Copyright Copyright 1998 Lucas Trust 56 a Treatise on the Seven Rays, Volume 4, Esoteric Healing. And with the teaching that all disease is the product of wrong thought. You are starting out to work, and I would have clear thinking on this point. The two problems which I have posited are closely related. We could express them in the form of two questions. 1. Is disease the result of thought? 2. Can the power of thought produce healing effects when used by an individual or a group? In view of the fact that many diseases are, as I have told you, latent in the very material of the planet itself, it is obvious that human thought is not responsible for disease. It antedates the arrival of humanity upon the planet. There is disease in the mineral world, in the vegetable kingdom, and also among animals, even in their wild states and in their natural habitat, uncontaminated by man. Hence, man cannot be held responsible for this, nor is it the result of human wrong thinking. It provides no answer to the question to say that it must therefore be due to the wrong thinking of the planetary logos or of the solar logos. This is only a begging of the question and an evasion of the issue. I would here remind you of the two definitions of the causes of disease which I earlier gave. Let me call them to your careful attention. All disease is the result of inhibited soul life. This is true of all forms in all kingdoms. Disease is the product of and subject to three influences. First, a man's past wherein he pays the price of ancient error. Second, his inheritance wherein he shares with all mankind those tainted streams of energy which are of group origin. Thirdly, he shares with all the natural forms that which the Lord of Life imposes on those forms. Those three influences are called the ancient law of evil sharing. This must give place someday to that new law of ancient dominating good. This law will be brought into activity by the spiritual will of man.
If you analyze the four causes of disease here given, you will note that disease will eventually be controlled by the release of the soul in all forms, and that this will be done by the act of use by man of his spiritual will. We could word this otherwise and say that when soul energy and the right use of the will which in the individual